Hi, in this video, we're taking a close-up look at this Re K06 mini keyboard. Taking a closer look at size comparison with other devices, its many features, testing it on an iPad, on a Mac, on a PC, and then its IR learning function. So let's begin with a very quick unboxing. This thing is very tiny. It's like a remote keyboard. It comes with a USB receiver dongle, USB-A to USB-C cable, and a user manual. Receiver, we're testing that. And a simple USB-C to USB-A cable for charging. And here's the mini keyboard. Very tiny and adorable. It does have a good feel to it. Seems sturdy. Here's the infrared diode for the remote learning function. We'll test that later. On off switch and USB-C port for charging. It's still a QWERTY keyboard with a finger touchpad. And left right navigation buttons. All the hot keys, I'll be testing them, some of them. It's supposed to be widely compatible with many devices. Android TV box, smart TV, PC, Xbox, desktop, laptop, smartphone. Here are the remote back buttons that you could get them to learn your TV remote buttons. I'll test this feature out later. The clickliness is fine. The middle band around this mini keyboard reminds me of the iPhone 4, which I happen to have right here. Take a look at the similarity. The iPhone 4, released in 2010, was known for its innovative and appealing design. Surely this mini keyboard takes design cues from it, I think. Let's take a look at the size comparison to some of my electronic devices. Apple Magic Trackpad. AirPods 3 case, Apple Magic Mouse, CDU V65 V2 with custom keycaps, Apple Magic Keyboard, iPhone Mini with leather case, a typical size scissors, a mechanical pencil, and a credit card. The two modes I'll be using to test this keyboard are Bluetooth and the 2.4 GHz radio frequency. To activate it, you would have to hold the function key and then press the Bluetooth or the 2.4 G. Before all of that, I'd like to charge the keyboard first. You could see the red light next to the battery icon. It is on when charging. After fully charged, it will be off. After charging, let's take a look at what it can do. When it is on, you either see a green light or a blue light. Green for the 2.4G mode, blue for the Bluetooth mode. Here you can see that it is backlit for a moment, then it would go to sleep when it is inactive. You can wake it up by pressing a button. Well, let's take a look at its first pairing with my iPad Pro. When pairing with a device that only has Bluetooth, you would need to press the function key and the Bluetooth button or the tap button, and then wait for the device to detect it, and then pair it. You can see here, the keyboard is now connected. Now for typing test. Typing on this small device would feel clumsy and inefficient compared to the tactile clicky physical keyboard. However, it does feel like typing on an old Blackberry device, if you know it. Here, interestingly, the touchpad is quite responsive, as you can see.
Here I am quite impressed with the touchpad, especially since I have tested many mini keyboards on this channel. Even more, it is on Bluetooth right now, and I have many Bluetooth devices connected right now. No interference? It has very small touch space. Still, as you can see, it's usable. Now notice it does not do two finger scroll, which is unfortunate. But you can always use the navigation buttons to scroll up or down. Not that bad, I would say. The touchpad is very responsive and works pretty darn good. It may not be perfect, but again, it is usable for me. Testing the home button or function home. I'm sure the other hot keys would also work. For example, let's try the volume up and down. And it works as expected. Moving on to the next pairing, this time on my MacBook Pro. But this time I'm going to try the 2.4 GHz mode with the receiver first. Then I will test Bluetooth after. Don't forget to turn it on. Then switch to the 2.4 GHz mode by pressing or holding the function and 2.4 G. Then you would see the green light. Here it works instantly. When a Mac detects a keyboard, a new keyboard, you would always see this page to set it up. The mini keyboard does have the key that the arrow is pointing to it, which is the Z button. However, there is no right shift button on this mini keyboard. Therefore, you cannot press that button the arrow is pointing to. And you can hear that I am trying any button near that area unsuccessfully. What you can do is select OK and select the type of keyboard that you're using. Mine is ANSI then it would work just fine. The touchpad works. And how about typing? Yeah, it works as well. With this mini keyboard, I would use it as a secondary keyboard for a desktop workstation for quick access to shortcut keys or macros, or use it as a wireless remote input device for a home theater PC connected to a TV. Now let's try the Bluetooth mode and pairing. You would have to hold the function button and Bluetooth or the tap button. And you can see that the blue light is on and the MacBook detected it. Just select it in the nearby devices. And then you'll be brought here again. You can try to go through the setup. Select continue and press the Z button, which is to the right of the shift button. However, you do not have a way to select the other button. Just go ahead and press any until this pops up. Then select OK and select the type of keyboard that you have. I have ANSI US. Then select Done, and you're good to go. Here again, you can see I am on Bluetooth. I think you can imagine your fingers may feel cramped and clumsy trying to hit the small keys, but you'll quickly adapt. Anyway, let's try browsing the, uh, or YouTube. Again, you cannot use two finger scroll. You would have to use the navigation buttons. As you can see, this works just fine. With this mini keyboard, you can sit back comfortably and navigate. Moving on to the next pairing with a Windows PC. Again, I will try the 2.4 GHz mode first, then I'll do Bluetooth mode. Just plug in the USB transceiver, dongle, or receiver. 
and then don't forget to switch to the 2.4 gigahertz mode by holding the function key and press the 2.4 G button and you should see the green light then you can see that it works instantly again the touchpad on this mini keyboard is quite convenient to use even though there is minimal space to move your finger around on it let's try typing again should i preach about typing on a small mini keyboard again anyway have a look but before then i'm gonna attempt to minimize the window have a look like pressing a left mouse button and drag double tap is like holding a left mouse button but once double tap, don't lift the thumb up. Rather, immediately drag. Seems to work just fine. Here, I'm holding the left button and drag the edge of the window. And now, typing. seems to be fine. Now I want to try something more interesting using the Paint app and have a look. I'm holding the left button that emulates the left mouse button and moving my finger around on the touchpad just to test how responsive this can be. Now I have not made any adjustment on the mouse which is the same as the touchpad sensitivity and cursor speed settings in the PC's control pane but it seems to work just fine. Alright now let's try the Bluetooth mode. Go to Start and Settings. Bluetooth and Devices. Not System. Bluetooth and Devices. Add Device. Select Bluetooth. And now switch to Bluetooth on the keyboard. Hold Function and Bluetooth or Tap button. And you can see the blue light flashing. Now right here, it's not yet paired. You cannot move the cursor. You would need the actual mouse to help out. Use the mouse to select the keyboard. Now it's connecting and connected. Now you can see the touchpad works. You could see the on-screen performance and re the responsiveness. Now I don't want to adjust any sensitivity because my mouse would be affected but more of because it's workable. Another thing I can say is that a mini keyboard lets you hold the device you're typing into closer to eye level and type with your hands in front of you, even with spelling error. Now again, painting or doodling test on Bluetooth mode. I feel no lag or very little lag. But this is nothing scientific. As you have seen, I have navigated through things with no problems. That's why I keep using the word usable. Alright, one last test. I'm going to attempt to use the infrared learning technology to program some buttons on this side of the keyboard to mimic the buttons of two remotes. What you have to do is hold a button you want for three seconds until the light is lit and press the button you want to mimic on the remote. When the button on the keyboard learned, it will flash twice. In this case, for this remote, it does not work. This white remote is a monitor slash TV remote and the process doesn't seem to work for this one going to try the on off button again hold a button that you want on the keyboard that you want it to mimic until the light is lit and press the button on the remote that you want it to learn now the light on the keyboard is supposed to flash not the other one so let's try it with a regular remote control that looks a bit dirty 
Now, one thing I wanted to show you is that the keyboard on the other side is off, which makes sense. Makes sense because it has to be its own entity or remote. For example, who turns on the remote before turning on the TV? All right, let's try again. Hold a button for three seconds until it's lit and press the button on the remote that you want it to learn. And there it flashes, that means it has learned. Let's try another one. Hold three seconds until it lit and press the button that you want it. And there you go. Now you can program it for two remotes, C1 and C2. And that's pretty good. Anyway, that's all I got for this long video. So thank you for watching.